What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back. Oh, look at the music again. We are here for another new episode of Rebuilding the Worst Team in Every Madden. And we are now on to Madden 2002. Another year where there appears to be a custom made intro song here. They're going with real graphics as opposed to showing NFL graphics. Hell of a sack there by the Philadelphia Eagles. Looks good. It looks like I'm getting slightly better graphics. Which is something that we are going to experience as we go up the channels of the newer Madden games. But here in Madden 2002, we are now on a path to find out who the worst team is so that we can enter in a five-year rebuild and try to make them one of the best teams in the game. So there's the splash screen there. Madden 2002. Much like Madden 2001, this wasn't really a Madden. I think Madden 03 was probably my first one. I think 01 and 02, maybe I had on uh, PC, like really early you know, PC games, but um, one thing I did notice when I was going into this is that they don't tell you your team overalls. Like when I'm looking at it from this standpoint, I can't see just from a base overall standpoint who the worst team is. So I actually was able behind the scenes to go and look on uh, a Madden rating site to see actually what the team overalls are. And I was able to find out who the worst team was in this game. So in last week's episode, the very first episode of this series, we started with the San Diego Chargers. They were a 70 overall. In this game, there is a team. There's a bunch, actually a couple teams that are a 70. I think the Cardinals are, are a 70 overall. They're one of the worst teams. Look at that. Their best player is a punter, which, you know, that's not great. They have David Boston there, Leonard Davis. couple players that I'm familiar with, right? Um, I know that the Dolphins, I'm pretty sure, also had a fairly... No, maybe it wasn't the Dolphins. Either way, I know the worst rating in this game is the... Carolina Panthers. So this is gonna be the team that we're rebuilding here in Madden 2002. We had to stop that intro right in its tracks because unfortunately, if you were a Panthers fan, they aren't the worst team in this game and you're gonna see very shortly. But we'll be doing this first kind of intro year, which won't count as a five-year rebuild with the Carolina Panthers. But when I was setting up the franchise, I saw this expansion draft, which is absolutely a feature I personally want to return to Madden. Just because, again, give us the user the creativity to do whatever we want in our weird world that we can create in our Madden. Having an expansion draft would be awesome. But when I saw this expansion draft, I was like, hold up. Houston Texans became a franchise like right around this time. So for it, it still counts, kind of, even though it's not officially going to count as you. Well, we went 5-11, and 11, which is, you know, if you remember our Chargers rebuild, that's kind of, you know, where we're at as a bad team. Uh, looking at our individual stats, Jeff Lewis, 28 touchdowns, 18 picks. Biaka Batuka, 760 yards, 5 tutties. We got 960 yards, 12 touchdowns for Musa Muhammad. 77 catches over 700 yards, 7 tutties for Wesley Walls. Defensive side, Rashard Anderson, the corner, led the team with 134 tackles, which is not great anytime your corner leads your team. Our middle linebacker led the team in sacks. So again, these numbers are not what you're looking for whatsoever. Our rookie, though, Dion Grant, led the team with three interceptions. That's kind of cool. But I couldn't give two shits about this because we just got to get to the offseason. Now we hit this in the offseason schedule. Expansion draft time. So you look at this. It's the Houston Texans. You can start as the Houston Texans from the beginning, the very beginning of building the roster uh, and I'm going to do that right away. So they're actually the lowest rated team. I will say the first time I did this, I was shocked at how bad the pool of players we have to pick from. They weren't that bad in real life. In real life, they got a couple legitimate players. So that is what we're going to be doing. We, we're going to go through the expansion draft. We're going to have it as the expansion team, Houston Texans here for this Madden 2000. Because this is unique. There's going to be no other years, unless this is still a feature, but there's no other teams that get introduced. This is our one and only time to make them uh, an expansion team and have fun with it. But look at the players. The highest overall player in the, is a 61. He doesn't even have a name. It's left end 94. Man, this is brutal. Top quarterback, Dickinson, Mike McMahon, Kerry Holcomb, AJ F Like, this is disgusting. Okay, I'm going to go through this draft and uh, we'll meet. It, it, our team's going to be legitimate, like 30 overall. Okay, here's our expansion squad. We're left end at number 94 <laughs> is the best. Like, this is just, I mean, I, I genuinely want to know, like, how many players. I've heard of Kelly Holcomb. I've heard of Mike McMahon. A.J. Feely, Eagles legend. But outside of that, I, I'm Dan Creeder at fullback. Familiar. 
Not, I mean, no idea for any of these players. On the offense, Cooper Carlisle I've heard of. Um, Larry Izzo sounds to me like it wasn't he with like the Patriots for a little bit. But this is honestly like absolute guy. We do still have the actual offseason where we're going to have easily the most salary cap. I'm going to try to sign as many players as I can in the open market. But my God, this is a disgusting player pool that we had to choose from for an expansion draft. But still, nonetheless, very hyped to have that expansion draft feature and very excited to go five years with the Houston Texans because I get to be able to build them from scratch. So we finished free agency, which is where we were active. I spent almost all of my salary cap, which is going to make sign because you have to sign your draft picks, right? So we're probably going to have to remove a couple guys because obviously we're going to prioritize signing our draft picks. But we got Trent Dill for a quarterback. I was able to get Skip Hicks at running back as well as Chad Morton there. Uh, 71 fullback Harold Morrill. Wide receiver, we got Donald Hayes, Ricky Prohl. Terrence Wilkins, Brandon Stokely. I got a young 52 overall Donald Driver. That seems kind of disrespectful. I got an 83 Marcus Polar tight end on the offensive line. 84 Tony Jones. I got an 81 and a 77 guard. 73 center, 76 guard. 86 right tackle Eric Williams on the defensive side. Chitty Ahenotu. Sure, man. Leonard Little, who I do know from the Rams. That's actually probably, like in terms of upside, one of the better players that we were able to get on free agency, Jason Fisk at D-tackle to 79. You got Cortez Kennedy, legend, RIP at 77, 75, 72. Ken Norton, wasn't he DC for like the Raiders or something like that? Uh, I got Newman, I got James Ferrier, much like Donald Driver. I know the player, kind of shocked with that overall rating. In the secondary, we got Daylon McCutcheon, Craig Newsom, Tyron Poole, R.W. McQuarters. Uh, at 82, here's Sean Wooden at uh, free safety, 78 depth, Keon Carpenter. I'm actually going to kick him over. To strong safety uh, in the original depth chart. I got Pat Tillman. We got David Akers at kicker and Ken Walter at punter. So let's get into the draft. But still, I don't see any way that we're going to be competitive in year number one. So again, it's another year where they, they apparently just give us the player ratings for some reason. Uh, look at the big boy though. So like edge rusher, outside linebacker, Bell. But ultimately, we're going to, at least for year one, let's go with the quarterback here. And let's draft Avery, 80 overall QB, 23 years old. Um, you know, look at that, that first round, not bad, Bell was probably the best, but Todd Avery, hopefully he can be the David Carr and, uh, lead us to great things. Outside of that, Jesus, how we're, I mean, where's the next important spot that we need to go? You know, uh, we got solid play, definitely the draft classes don't appear to be as overpowered as they were in, uh, the last couple drafts that we did in Madden 2001, where you could get guys that are well into the 80s. Here in the second round, like some of these guys, 25-year-old rookie. He actually looks like that tight end. It's probably going to be the best of the bunch here. Jackson, we'll grab him. And then maybe in the third round, we'll draft one of those linemen. I think they're actually going to be probably off the board. Yeah. Way, way less talent in these drafts. But I guess, hey, it'll make it that much more rewarding once we make this Houston, Texas team into a legitimate contender. I'll finish up the draft here and show you guys the recap at the end. Okay, so we tried to sign our first round draft pick, and we don't have the salary cap to do so. Okay. Okay, so the good news is I was able to sign our first two picks. Todd Avery at quarterback, Heath Jackson at tight end, and they were easily our two highest rated players. Bad news, can't afford to sign anybody else in the draft class. Live and let learn, you know? Live and let learn, don't go as hard, maybe. In the shitty expansion draft, or don't sign literally every free agent that you can afford. So now here is our fully updated team as we gear up for year one of the expansion Houston Texans. We have Todd Avery, the number one overall player in the draft, at quarterback, running back. I did let the computer sign our players, so it looked like they actually ended up signing a lot. We got Powell, the third round running back, that I didn't think we are going to be able to sign. Uh, wide receiver, we're going to be led by uh, Donald Hayes. We have Wilkins there as well, Crane. Ricky Pro, I don't know how we were able to sign. I think the computer just gave us some, like, luck. Because I'm not seeing anybody that's... Okay, so we got we had to cut Pollard, the tight end, unfortunately. But we have Jackson, our second-round selection, 77 overall. He's going to make some plays. And the offensive line, it actually looks like everyone stayed there, which is good. And this is a better offensive line. Like, you just think back to, like, the first year the Houston Texans existed. You know, David Carr is one of those kind of what-ifs. Because, you know, he goes down as a bust because he wasn't very good. But the team around him at Houston was horrible. 
So you never really gave him a fair opportunity to see if he could develop into a franchise quarterback because the Texans, like, he was like the most sacked rookie quarterback of all time. And I think we've done a better job with our own line. 86, 76, 73, 81, 84 across the board to put up a better offensive line than what David Carr had to deal with. On the defensive side, we got Leonard Little, uh, 79, 77, a D tackle. No real changes there. No changes to the linebacking core. Secondary remains the same. We have uh, Wooden at free safety pool. So look, they're strong. Sa so safety is where we made some of our cuts to be able to get under the salary cap there. Either way, you know, I would argue that this team's probably only a couple shades lower than that original Carolina Panthers team that we're going to start with. So we easily, though, have the worst team that you could be in Madden 2002. And now it's time to start the rebuild. So I'm going to obviously play the very first game in teams exist. And look at this. They gave us the most... Generic. I have black uniform and white uniform. Okay, I, I assume they probably didn't announce their jerseys yet. Uh, nice graphics, though. All right, Reliant Stadium. This is first look at the graphics here. Okay. We have a couple advantages. Todd Avery looking to make his start at QB. There is the man that's going to lead our franchise to greatness. Jamal Powell, third-round running back. Looking great. And those Raiders jerseys that we apparently are going to... Why don't we play the Raiders? And you know it's bad when your fullback is getting one of like the introductions here. Donald Hayes, one of our big signings in free agency. Are they doing this for all of our players or just like our key starters? You know, because we got we to show some love to the only... Are they doing this for like all of our guys? We don't, we don't need to do that. Let's go to the coin toss. Jets select Tails. Oh, yeah, baby. We're going to receive. Let's play offense because you already know i got to get that first interception out of the way, and then we're going to be absolute money for the rest of this game. All right, not a great first play. Hayes squares our guy. Fatality. I just hit square. What is this? Oh. All right, we got, we're, we're in shambles right now. Where's X? Like I'm playing on an Xbox controller. That's square. Why is dive? Like, what is going on here? Square should be X, right? Or is that B? Oh, man. Yeah, maybe I'm messing up here. Maybe this is just, this is, this is the first drive we needed. Fourth and 19. We're going to have a hell of a punt. We're going to set franchise record here with the punt, regardless of how good it is. Definitely just fuck that up. And uh, it's not great. Shambolic first drive. Oh, there's a sack. Cortez Kennedy getting home to Chad Pennington. Oh, no. Oh, uh, no. Oh, there we go. Good tackle. Curtis Martin, though, probably the best skill position player in this game. Third and five, a chance to bend but not break. Oh, let's go. Oh, he's wide open. Anthony Beck. How do I remember that name? Why? I have no regard to do that. But that was a hell of a bomb. Good play call. Wide open. quarters we got a chance here to bail out our offense well special teams with the fumble third and 12 we gotta watch Wayne Sherbet slot wide receiver for the Jets he's dangerous Come on. oh we got home oh don't win oh hell of a PBU on the outside Newsom does his job we hold him to a field goal attempt Yeah, we're starting with the streaks play, man. There's no way we... Someone's got to have to get open here. Hayes is our guy square. I've been having issues trying to hit him. Ooh, is that Santana Moss? Oh, that was a hell of a... Ah! Sakes. Oh, the tight end downfield. Oh, and he makes the grab. And he makes the grab. Second round pick, Jackson. Big time play. First first down in Houston Texans history. 
Go! Oh, this guy's a beast. The tight end is making plays. We're finally starting to put it all together. Is that Herman Edwards? Herm Edwards for the Jets? He's worried that we're getting momentum and you can't stop this momentum. We got to finish this drive off, though. Let's go toss. Toss play seems like a very on-brand first touchdown here. We got... Oof. That was well defended. Where's the tight end? He's the only guy that feels like he wants to make plays. Jackson and X. It's actually our go-to read here. Hopefully the middle of the field stays open. Which it kind of does. We lead him inside. And there's the first touchdown of the history of the Houston Texans. Avery gets it. Jackson on the receiving end. First round pick. The second round pick doesn't get better than that. Get home, baby. Get home. Oh, we went all or nothing, but we got the pass breakup. Got to have just under a minute. Try to work our way downfield and get some points before halftime. Oh, it's Jackson again. Burn the timeout. Guys, a beast over 100 yards in this game. There you go, Wilkins. Good grab. Another timeout. Okay, we got to find a way to get the ball into our tight end. Let's go tight end corner. Still looking for a first down. Third and 10. Infield goal range. Got to remember, we have David Akers at kicker. He's an 85 overall. So I expect him to make a lot of the kicks that we... Oh, that's not good. That probably should have been picked, but we're going to have an opportunity. Oh, gee. I'm at... Kicking is weird. It wants me to punt? There's no way I'm punting it. We have an 85 kicker. Okay, let's see how... I, I can't see with these goddamn glasses on. Okay, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, obviously, I get the two meters there. You want to get at the top. Let's go there. The wind. All right, here we go. That looks good. That should be three points. Dude, that was like a 30-yard kick. Where was that kick from? Like 35 yards and we're short? Jesus. Glass is on. That's a drop. That's a drop that finally goes on the other way. It's been all drops on my offense. Finally, we get a break. A chance to absolutely probably never even think about attempting a field goal again. But to score a touchdown. Let's keep working that tight end. Keep using it. That first and second round pick. It's working well for the offense. Maybe even evolve the run game a little bit. How'd you fumble it? What a jobber, man. What a jabroni. Straight clowns on my special teams unit. Let's get Jackson. Let's start, let's start manufacturing touches for our really good tight end. Boom, that's good. Mark Simonow. Come on, you had him there. That's a clean and just terrible tackling. They're getting forced force fumbles. They're lighting my players up, and I got that kind of tackling. Oh, the ball! Let's go! Small victories! <laughs> so, we finished the year 4 12. Got that fumble. Four wins better. Four wins is is better than expected. I thought legitimately we'd be a one win, maybe a chance to sniff 0-16. But well, we were able to get that one victory. Looking at this first stats, we hold. Again, we don't even have the premier pick. We're going to be picking five in the upcoming draft. Other teams did worse. Uh, Avery at quarterback looks definitely more promising than, say, some of the rookie quarterbacks we had in Madden 2001. 26 touchdowns, 15 picks. 4,100 yards is not that bad. Uh, running game, not great. Definitely put running back at one of our top priorities uh, this offseason. Wide receiver, Donald Hayes went over 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Wilkins, nine and six. Jackson, that tight end that dominated. We had almost 150 yards in that first game. He finished his rookie season 72 catches, 767 and three. 
which are really good numbers. On the defensive side, Crockett led the team 76 tackles. We had 10 sacks, 13 DFLs from Jason Fisk. What a beast. Three picks, Newsom, who was very good for us in that first game. Three picks, Sean Wooden. Happy with some of these numbers, man. But ultimately, still another year that we have to just try our best to get better. So looking at some of our top players here in free agency, I, I think Newsom and Fisk are probably the two guys because Newsom was really good in that game. We played Fisk, led our team in TFLs, led our team in sacks. So I did turn salary cap off just because I made such a... That, that whole first offseason was shambolic. I didn't want to ruin the rest of the rebuild just because I wasn't really sure exactly what was going on. So, But we're still not going to take advantage of the salary cap just to, because you can't get rid of you know some of the dead money and all that stuff. Uh, we're going to try and keep... Some of these contracts, like like if I if Newsom doesn't want to resign like a reasonable deal, we're just gonna let him walk. Uh, we were able to get Fisk to resign. Now it's time to try to make some big moves in this free agency period. I will say though, I am gonna try to figure out how to turn the salary cap back on. Essentially, what happened was when I wanted to start year one because our salary cap was so bad, it was like, do you want to automatically turn the salary cap off so you could start the season? I hit yes, and I'm not really seeing like I went down to stats and info. I'm not seeing where the option is to turn it on. Maybe I can't turn it on to the next off season because it's, it's just not here right now. But ultimately, yeah, it's a rebuild. Where's the fun of that if I don't have the salary cap turned on? So I'm going to try to turn it on. If not, we'll do our best to show some resistance so that, I mean, it's, you know, you're only cheating yourselves. I'm only cheating the integrity of this video and this series if I turn the salary cap off and just sign every top free agent. You know what I'm saying? So here are our targets right now. Not going for all the Premier players. Sean O'Hara, going to the fastest running back. I'm going to try to bring back Newsom and Crockett. Two guys who let hit. Jason Taylor is the big name overall in this free agency period. That's the guy that, like, I'm going to get him. He's the one player. But, I mean, I could absolutely sign, again, because salary comes up. I could sign all these players. Would be meaningful upgrades. But I want to try and be somewhat restrictive. So we will try to go all in on Jason Taylor. I'll sim through a couple more days. And we'll see if we can lock up and secure that signature. All right, so we were able to secure the bag, get all of our targets. Jason Taylor, 92 overall defensive end in his prime. He's now a member of the Houston Texans, but with or without salary cap on, there's 0% chance I wouldn't have signed him. All right, we're on the clock. First pick, I know it's, you know, hey, it's a, it's a, it's a different time because running back is our biggest position to need, I think, when you look at our squad. I mean, yeah, we could use a nice young edge rusher. But look at the running backs that are available. Look at that significant drop. I feel like it's just too good of an opportunity to get a playmaker at running back. So we're going to select King. Look at that, man. He looks hell. Jeff King. Hell of a pick. 80 overall. One of the top picks there. The second best pick after that uh, D tackle there, Daniel Fisher, in the first round. So that, I'm happy with that. Now we're going to the second round. And I do think it's also important to continue to build up the offensive line. We lost our starting right tackle. So I'm going to grab Zala. 77 overall. Um, now we're going into the nitty gritty. Don't really need a kicker. Uh, I feel like off the top of my head, center. It's definitely a spot we can eat. Get an unsex. That's. I mean, we're in the garbage picks now. Let's finish out the draft. And I'll show you guys the recap. So yeah, easily noticeable that the draft classes in Madden 2002 are a lot less cheesy, I suppose, than in Madden 2001. But uh, obviously, with salary cap off, I will be able to resign my players, and I will try to figure out how I can turn salary cap back on. But for our draft recap, well, we got the starting running back, a starting right tackle, a starting center, depth linebacker, Xavier Terry, 69. We got a fullback, Keenan Payne, Keith Mays at strong safety, 61. And then just last pick, I'm with the fastest corner available, which is Sean Kelly. But we're now here for year two of the Houston Texans rebuild. Avery's up to an 83 overall as our starting quarterback. King, our first round draft pick, will be day one starter at running back. Wide receivers, uh, definitely probably going to be the next position we consider getting upgrades as Hayes, who did go over 1,000 yards last year, is our top guy with a kind of underwhelming 78 overall. So we got Brandon Stokely there. Um, well, there's our playmakers on offense. We have Paul. We actually have two tight ends. That's pretty dope. Uh, Sean O'Hare at left guard's not bad. Massive hole there. The offensive line not nearly as good as it was last year because we signed a lot of one-year veterans that just aren't going to be conducive to a long rebuild for our squad. But Zala, hey, getting a young player out there. 77 right tackle. He's going to be a guy that we can build around. Definitely on the offensive line. The ends, um, well, we're going to put Leonard Little for sure over uh, LE number 94. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Jason Taylor, huge get on the defensive side of the ball. Franchise player, right? We bought a franchise player, fine, whatever. 
I don't care that I didn't draft him. Jason Taylor is going to be an absolute beast. We have Fist there at defensive tackle. He was very good for us last year. He led the team in TFLs and sacks. Linebacking core, nothing too crazy. Terry actually is also going to be starting. One of our younger players, third, fourth round pick. Uh, secondary, you know, got our two best players from last year still back there. The safeties are a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, 91 overall kicker. I mean, that's, that's the personification of a bad team is your highest overall player in Madden being your kicker. So at least we're, we're right there in season number two. One of the settings, unfortunately, once you turn salary cop off, it's off. So we'll just endure that for the remainder of this rebuild. Oh, look who's getting better. Eight and eight. Took us five years to get the Chargers last year, or the last rebuild to eight and eight. Only took us two seasons. Definitely the addition of someone like, like Jason Taylor is going to help us out. Let's look at the individual stats. Avery looks every bit the part of a franchise quarterback. The number one overall pick last year in his sophomore season. 4,300 yards, 33 touchdowns, 14 picks. Very good given the fact that our top wide receiver too is 78 overall. The brand new running back over 1,000 yards for Jeff King. Six touchdowns. Very happy seeing that. Uh, Hayes over 1,000 yards again. Wilkins 9-9. Nine and nine. Solid numbers. King of the backfield. A little bit of a dual threat. 55 catches, 460 yards. Uh, Jackson, the tight end with a solid year. Almost 600 yards, six touchdowns. Happy with all those numbers. Terry, the rookie. Leading the team, 128 tackles. We got eight sacks from left end, number 94. I wouldn't have it any other way. Six picks, Newsome. Glad we are able to re-sign him. So this is definitely a team here in year two. You're starting to see we're going to at least have a chance at making the playoffs over the next three years of this rebuild. Suppose I should be like starting to put in also the yearly awards. Just to give you an idea of the lay of the land around the league. Dante Culpepper was the MVP uh, as well as Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year went to right outside linebacker 57 for uh, a team that I can't say their name anymore. But uh, Donnie Edwards or Lacker was there as well for all of the major awards. And now signings again. The last time we'll mention, so we don't just bring it every time with no salary cap. Or we're gonna try to be realistic. Like I'm not gonna re-sign everybody, but I do want to keep Newsom here, who has been uh, really solid for us, uh, playing with them and the sim. But the rest of these guys try to, try to get a little bit younger going forward as we gear up for year three. So again, with the idea that we maybe splurge last off season this year, we're trying to just get younger. So I'm not, you know, a lot of the top guys here, unfortunately, are there positions that I have a young guy that I want to try to develop or it just doesn't make sense um, from, like, you know, their 14-year-old vet, like someone like Junior Sale. But I do have a nice little board here that I do like. Uh, we got a 71 depth D tackle, Freeman at guard 72, Sellers would be a starting upgrade at fullback, uh, Garns would be a starting strong safety for us, 79. Uh, and then the biggest get would be Matt Stitchcomb at left tackle. We don't have left tackle on the roster. Only five years in, still has a lot of football ahead of him. I think he can develop well into the 80s. He's a 79, so he is our top target this year. So, uh, you know, maybe that speaks to, like, we're not going to be going crazy. As this thing automatically updates for you sometimes. So you have a little bit of, like, rush against the clock, potentially, uh, as we do uh, secure the signature of the defensive tackle. But I feel very confident that we'll be able to get all these targets. And hopefully there's a lot of good talent in the draft. And to, thankfully, no shock, no surprise, we were able to get everyone on our board three new starters for the Texans as we gear up for year three. So looking at our team, really not, not in the position to draft best player available. Even though we did sign a strong safety, this guy's only 21 and he's an 83. I needed a corner. I mean, this guy got 99 speed, which looks good, but he's only a 71. Um, you know, I could have used a... This is, I mean, obviously, hey, this is what happens when you get better. You, you pick from some of the scraps that are down here, right? We got Gore at wide receiver there. But with, like, the highest overall play, like, I mean, I, I guess best case scenario, maybe we'll draft a strong safety and hopefully that 99 speed corner's there for our second pick. But I have my doubts. He's still on the board, I think. Come on. Is he still here? Yes, he is. There we go. Happy with it. Let's just sim out the rest of the draft. So after the selection of our strong safety and the fastest player I've ever seen, Brian Howard, uh, we were able to get a punter. 82 overall. It is an upgrade. I think our current punter is 76. So any upgrades at this point is good. And then we just got some depth guys, wide receiver, quarterback, and finishing up with a special teamer that will be also a wide receiver. 
So coming off an 88 season in year two, year three, we got Avery up to an 85, which is very good. He's on the trajectory to become absolutely a franchise quarterback into the 90s. King's up to an 83 at wide receiver, still, you know, unable to grab that wide up. That would be the, the true difference maker in the draft or in this offseason. But, I mean, we're able to move the ball last year, and there was no real regression for our receiving group. Jackson only got better. O-line, we got Stitchcom, who was our big get in free agency, 79. Rest of the O-line's coming along. Graham's a rookie, got him last year, well, sophomore now, up to a 75. He's developing nicely. Same with Zala, he's up over the 80 mark. Um, obviously, Jason Taylor still, over, still is easily our best player. Fisk has been very good in the sim. Linebacker core remains the same. Secondary, Howard, the 99 speed corner, actually gets an opportunity to be our starting slot. Uh, Wood in there, and our first round draft pick, Rob Jordan, 83 overall strong safety. Happy that we're able to have him. David Akers up to a 97. Got to have like an X factor with how quickly he's developing. And Hitchcock, our punter, will also start over Ken Walter. So 8-8 eight eight last year. I'm thinking this year, as long as our wide receivers don't bite us in the ass, should be at minimum 8-8 eight eight yet again. Hopefully double digits. Oh. 10 and 6. That got to be playoffs. Did we get a first round bye? There's no, that got to be playoffs. There's no way we didn't make 10 and 6. Yes, we did. The number 4 team. Thank God. Thank God we're having some success in this rebuild. Because he sure as shit did not get one in the last one. Avery, 4,200 yards, 28 touchdowns, 17 picks. Don't care. Let our team to the playoffs. Very happy with that. 1,200 yards, 11 tutties. Jeff King, 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns for Hayes. So what we are learning is that it's all kind of tied around the quarterback. At least in, in, in Madden 2002. Because our wide receivers aren't very good. Like our high, like the average overall of like our wide receiver room, like 72, probably 73, somewhere in that range. And they're playing well. Zala, 50 total pancakes. Happy with that. Terry, back to back years, leading the team in tackles. Also with seven sacks, leading the team. Jason Taylor, seven sacks, 10 TFL, six picks. Daylock. Top five rappers alive. You already know. Six picks. They're happy with that, but we made the playoffs. Not only did we make the playoffs. First round bye, fellas. So let's go ahead and uh, sim this round because we're not playing them. We've got to figure out who we're going to be actually taking on. And we have Jaguars at Texans. Oh, come on. Come on, baby. Yes! We're into the AFC Conference Championship. Uh, if we go to the Super Bowl, I'm going to play this one. Absolutely going to play it, even though it's going to be, you know, we probably have a better shot. Not. Just letting the sim do its thing? Oh, wow. Wow. We got absolutely crushed. We look like we didn't belong. We look like the team was playing in their first playoffs ever. You go up against an experienced squad like the Denver Broncos. Only lost two games all year long. And they absolutely spank us 49. But at least we have some postseason success to build upon for year four of this rebuild. We know this team's good enough. We know our quarterback's good enough. Let's just help out the wide receiver room. Maybe get a piece or two on the defensive side of the ball and put this team over the edge to become a Super Bowl champion. And as we go to this free agency period, first, you got to start with re-signing your players. And for us, two big ones, franchise quarterback Todd Avery. Got to get him locked up for a long-term. Man, these contracts would be... It's just a different time, right? Different period. We also got Heath Jackson at tight end, who's up to an 89 overall from that first draft class. Locking him up. So for this free agent period, going to be a little more aggressive than years past. Uh, going for, you know, we need some starters. We lost a lot of depth, guys. So I'm looking at uh, Masick at right guard, 75. Eaton at defensive tackle, 77. Bobby Taylor at corner, former Eagle, 79. Holman, outside linebacker. Keith Bullock, outside linebacker. I need both starting left and right outside linebackers. And then this is kind of, uh, you know, surplus requirement. Hugh Douglas, man. Hugh Douglas, former Eagle, kind of like Bobby Taylor. Do I need a defensive end? You know, maybe not. But, you know, still again, not just cherry picking the top available players. Like Michael Strahan's there. Uh, Norman Hand's the top defensive tackle if I want to go that direction. But definitely upping the, the uh, aggressiveness of our team this offseason. Because we know how close we were to winning that Super Bowl, going on a Super Bowl run. And, you know, we're going to be able to make this move. Keith Bullock, we got to have to re-up on a couple of these guys but these guys, this could be the free agency class that takes this Houston Texan team over the edge in year four of the rebuild. So we got almost all of our top players. In a world of no salary cap, I also think it's fair to try to just keep that balance. And if, uh, if another team comes in, outbids a competitive offer from us, it's just too good to be true. So we were able to get Bullock, our linebacking core, all situated. 
However, unfortunately, Mr. Barry Douglas uh, decided to go with the Baltimore Ravens. So we lost out on our top target, but we got all of our secondary targets. I feel pretty good about that. All right, we got the next draft up here, and this is actually a pretty solid draft board for us. Because the two positions I think we need that I want to try to get younger at is corner, but we used second round pick on a corner last year, and D-tackle. And oddly enough, the second highest player available on the board is a defensive tackle falling right into our laps at pick 29. So I'd like to introduce everybody to the great Henry Gonzalez. As we go to the second round, let's see how we can make the most of this. Still another D-tackle. Not really... I guess wide receiver, let's grab Williams here, 97 speed. Again, though, unfortunately, you look from free agency, you look at the draft, there's not like that 80-some overall wide receiver that, that, we're kind of, uh, that we're kind of looking for. So I suppose we could just keep adding depth to wide receiver. Um, there's no one here that really stands out. We got a 99 speed wide receiver that we could probably get at the tail end of the draft. Um, so I guess we just go with... Event developmental guys, I suppose, but definitely, you know, maybe a little bit underwhelming. Understanding what the drafts were like in the last game versus this year, a very stark contrast in terms of the talent that you can get. Draft pull, I mean, not amazing, but we got a new starter defensive tackle and a very fast wide receiver in Eddie Williams, who hopefully can make a couple splash plays here and utilize that 97 speed as a rookie. So very quickly, looking at the squad before we gear up for year number four. No real drastic changes, no massive jumps, and overall still have the issue at wide receiver. Uh, offensive line is solid, defensive line, uh, first we got to give credit, Zala, developing very nicely up to an 85 overall. Uh, Jason Taylor still holding on to that 90 rating, D-tackle one, Henry Gonzalez, so we're going to be able to see how much of an impact he can make as a true rookie. Keith Bullock and Holdman, our two big free agency gets, are going to start with uh, Terry, Xavier Terry, who since he's been on our team, this is year three that he's been in the league. You're one and two as a rookie and sophomore. He led the team in tackles. So he's been very productive. A little bit underwhelmed that his, his development hasn't gone off. Uh, secondary looks fine with our corners there. Safeties look pretty good. Oddly enough, our best developing player might be in the full... Jamar Hitchcock was an 82 rookie, and now he's up to a 94. So he went up 12 overall points. So respect the punter. And year four, not as good. Maybe playoffs, so though. Nine and seven. Wasn't the double-digit win that we were, you know, double-digit win season that we were looking for. But looking at the stats, ooh, it's going to be, oh, no. Just on the outside looking in. Do we have the most points scored, though? We have the best offense and one of the worst defenses, unfortunately. Even though all of our money in free agency went to the defensive side of the ball. Year four, a little bit underwhelming. 42 touchdowns, Todd Avery, stud. Running back Jeff King has got 1,000 yards every year he's been in the league. Happy with that. Really hope, man, we can get like a playmaker at wide receiver here in this draft or free agency period. Like I'm talking like, give me a bit, give me T.O. Give me something like that, man. Defensively, Terry yet again, another team in tackles. We got eight sacks, Eaton, eight from Goldman or Holdman, Warwick Holdman. We got eight sacks, 10 TFLs, three picks. Hell of a year for him making his debut for the Houston Texans. But unfortunately... Wasn't good enough, man. Yearly awards. Uh, MVP went to Mike Anderson. Not going to lie. Doesn't really ring a bell here. Uh, we do have McNabb and Culpepper there on that short list. Offense player, they went to Anderson. Defense player, they went to Dan Morgan. Maybe we should have stayed with the Panthers. Dan Morgan's absolutely Jeremiah Trotter there as well. As now it's time to go all in this offseason. We're going to be signing again. Still going to be a little cautious a little self-aware of no salary cap not going to sign just everybody but could be in line for a trade before the season starts depending on where our roster's at uh involving future draft picks so our final in-house re-signing period uh we have mccutcheon who's been solid for us at corner i'm not going to overpay but i can you know feel good about offering longer years because obviously it's our final year of the rebuild so i'm going to same here graham at center who's also been very good i think we should be able to offer him three years terry who's been our leading tackler Pretty much every year since last year, let's get him locked up on a three-year. And then, boy, oh boy, the biggest offseason in this rebuild. Well, I mean, maybe outside of the expansion draft offseason, obviously. So again, still going to be aggressive, but not ridiculously aggressive. There are some players that I'm not necessarily going to go for the top guy available. But there are also scenarios where we were. We have Chris Samuels, perfect 99 at left tackle. Got to take a chance there. Claiborne at defensive tackle. Uh, Tony Brackens, we absolutely do need a starting defensive end. Uh, I believe he's the second highest available DM, maybe the first one. Jamie Sharper's not a need, but I do remember he actually was a member of the original 
Houston Texans. He was like probably one of their best players on the defense side of the ball. So I figure why not try to reunite him? Uh, Morgan is the top wide receiver available. And again, is not what we're looking for at that position group. Only a 76 overall. Let's see how the first little update. I'm also looking at Dre Bly down there at corner. More so just the corner. I remember Brackens. Oh, these are all, all these guys are getting better offers. That's not a great start to the offseason. I re up one time on everyone that went with another team's offer, and I got everyone except Jamie Sharper. Unfortunately, we would have been able to find a way to make him a starter on the defense. But we got Sam Lewis here at left tackle. That will give us the ability for Stitchcom, who we signed at left tackle. We could kick him into one of our guard spots that we need to upgrade. And we just, hey, it's all or nothing, man. Final year. Might as well try to do everything we can to win a Super Bowl because, you know, it'd be kind of annoying to go two rebuilds in this new rebuilding the worst team in every Madden without getting a Super Bowl. Ah, that's disappointing, man. We go into our first draft, pick 18, looking for that wide receiver that's going to be a game changer. And unfortunately, again, man, wide receivers, few and far between. Uh, I, I genuinely don't really know the best spot for, like, probably corner at this point. What a, oh, man. Why are wide receivers so hard to get? It's bad in 2002, man. It's just, it's almost disrespectful. Oh, well, they know how badly we need this. But, hey, welcome in the first round. Earl Moore, 75 overall corner of the Houston Texans. The rest of the draft was strictly in BPA mode. You got a 71 right guard, 66 corner. Again, continue to add depth. 69 running back a little bit late. Kevin Dillon, some good value there. But ultimately, you know, really, really needed that wide receiver. Here's our all or nothing. Show it our work for the Houston Texans. Todd Avery, former first franchise quarterback, first overall pick in the history of the Houston Texans. Up to a 92 overall. So he looks very good. Kingsman solid, 89. Wide receivers again, man. It's ugly. Doesn't look anything special. Uh, but Hayes has been productive. Uh, at or around a thousand yards, but we're we're like um, like the Patriots kind of right. You have your Gronk, which is Heath Jackson. You just have a bunch of role players at wide receiver that can supplement that. Offensive line Samuels was a massive get at left tackle, which I feel good about. We can kick Stitchcom in the left guard. He's a 76, 81 center, 79 guard, 87 right tackles. So offensive line definitely one of the best O lines in the league, probably top ten. Defensive line, we're gonna take Brackens here. And make him over Bailey for sure. Why is he not already starting? Brackens 86. Jason Taylor 91. D-tackle we have Claiborne and Gonzalez 87 and 80. So that D-line is damn near S-tier. Linebacking core also very good. Secondary not the best. What is with these like... Do I have McCutcheon somewhere else? Why is Simmons over McCutcheon? And Simmons over Dre Bly? And Simmons over Moore? Was more our top guy because he was our first round pick. So there we go. I mean, hey, secondary is what it is. Free safety, Wooden's an 80. 86 for Jordan. Rob Jordan, former first round pick for us. Special teams, one of the best special teams units in the game. Year five, Houston Texans, all or nothing. Let's get that Super Bowl. Yes, great series. Soak anticlimactic, seven and nine. We spend all that money in free agency. We finished with a 30 and a 40 bomb. Seven and nine. Two Maddens done. And we're still looking. We're still looking for that first Super Bowl. Not good at all. I mean, you're not even gonna be close to making the playoffs. 22nd. Um, way too many turnovers, Todd. Again, is it the failure to land a wide receiver? Like just a disgusting. Like, maybe I could have traded for one. I felt because we were so aggressive in that final free agent period, you know, especially landing 99 tackle, that we that we didn't also try to trade, like, a bunch of picks to grab a wide receiver. But maybe that was the downfall of the squad. 4,400 yards. I mean, the QB played well. I mean, you can look at his career when we're done here. For really all of our players. Look at that. 166 touchdowns for his career. It's not bad. 1,000 yards for the running back. 1,000 yards for Donald Hayes. 14 touchdowns. It's a hell of a year. Crane went over 1,200 yards. Uh, Terry led the team tackles, sacks for Tony Brackens, and Jason Taylor, I would definitely say a little underwhelming, only one sack, you're no injuries, and you're like the only 90 player on our defense, Earl Moore, the rookie, led the team with three interceptions, I mean, kind of looking at the career stats here, um, he still only has 49 career sacks, I feel like that's wrong, um, 
I mean, those are good numbers for Jeff King, though. Four years in the league, three years pro, 4,500 yards, 29 touchdowns. Ain't bad. And obviously, Todd Avery, the first pick. Um, I suppose we could look at just from a ward standpoint. Who's the best MVP? Went to Culpepper. So, Don, I mean, Brian, shout out to Brian Urlacher, defensive player coming runner up for the MVP. Don't see that anymore. But Culpepper was a beast. Uh, Urlacher's there as well. Uh. I don't know, man. If I go back, maybe just say screw it, screw the optics, and go all in to trade for a wide receiver. But this is this is disappointing. Madden 01 and Madden 02, not good enough to take the worst team in the game. And this one here was definitely a different case because our starting squad was probably I think I think people say like the best you can get from that expansion is like in the 40s. I think 44 overall. So I mean, you know, definitely, you know. Bit off way more than we could chew. We, did, we couldn't pull like the NHL. Remember NHL had that Vegas team and they were really good right after being an expansion. Was not the same case. We did not have the same caliber players for the Houston Texans. But it was cool and definitely unique going through that expansion draft experience here in Madden 2002. But we're 0-2. So we're going to have another opportunity in a couple days time. We will hit up Madden 2003. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what team you think is the worst. I mean, obviously you could cheat and probably look, at, look uh, online somewhere. But what do you think is the worst team in Madden 2003 that we're going to pick. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. We got a great response on the first video. I appreciate that, especially at, at this point in time in the Madden cycle and where my channel's at. I appreciate everyone that watches the videos and comments and subscribes and likes and everything in between. I really do appreciate it. But thank you guys for watching. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.